Deferred taxes, three more examples of deferred taxes. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page and the website. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies is out in just a few days, March 4th of 2013. And the blog is Accounting Accidentally. What I've done here is take a template that I used to do my first uh, deferred tax video. It is in this format. And what I've done is amend it to answer a question that I had for a student on deferred taxes. So, first of all, uh, we're talking about a temporary difference. So we need to put deferred tax temporary difference example up here because I'm not talking about permanent differences. That's a different issue. The reason that we have a temporary difference is that our book or the taxes on our uh, accounting records, our book income, is different from the income that we have on our tax return. Different income levels means different taxes due. So if the book income differs from the tax income, we're going to have a difference. Now in this case, it is a temporary difference. And the temporary difference is because depreciation expense is recognized in a different way between book, what's in your accounting records, and tax, what's on your tax return. This is a simpler example than the one that I've posted before, which did four years and also showed journal entries below. Um, keep it real simple. Let's say that for tax purposes, we use an accumulated, de an accelerated depreciation method that allows us to deduct $5,000 as depreciation expense this year, 2009, in the current year. For book purposes, we use some sort of straight line method, but we don't get any deduction in 09. We split the depreciation evenly between 2010 and 11. It's not a perfect example, but it's simple enough to help explain this temporary difference in a, in a clear way. First thing that I always point out is that the total depreciation under either method is the same $5,000 for book it's 2500 over two years for tax if I hit that same sum at the top that's in blue it's also five thousand dollars in total so there is no difference in total depreciation it's all about when do you recognize in what year do you recognize the depreciation so I also mentioned that in 2009 there is more expense specifically more depreciation expense and there is less income because of the accelerated depreciation method you're recognizing it all in the current year this is the hardest part this is the formula to explain this and what was confusing to the student was well what if the tax rate is different between the two years it was true of the first example I did on this over here that you saw on the tax number one video and it's true here in 2009 we assume a 30 percent tax rate in 2010 and 11 we assume a 40 percent by uh, accounting for uh, the prior any prior year's activity and removing it that's how we keep this whole thing straight so here's what I mean <clears throat> we have a line here that says our cumulative difference that means the difference in all years so far all years so far so in 2009 we only have one year's worth $5,000. Now you'll notice that the debits are positive numbers and the credits are negative numbers just to um, make the math a little easier. So we have a $5,000 credit and I get that by doing book minus tax here at the top. Book minus tax here, 2500 minus green, zero book minus tax here, 2500 in blue less tax zero, so I come up with temporary differences here. So in 2009 we've only had one year so far and that difference is $5,000. You notice that I put a negative in front of it to flip the sign. I multiply it by 30 percent <clears throat> which means my year-end balance, either a deferred tax asset or liability, is fifteen hundred dollars. 
there's no previous balance to subtract, so my credit, which is going to be a positive number in this case, is $1,500. And the reason is I have less tax this year because I have more expense for taxes this year. More expense for taxes this year, less income this year. I have a deferred tax liability because I have more tax later. $1,500. Credit, more taxes later in future years. Let's go to 2010, and I'll correct this as I go here. Well, no, I need to leave that. It's cumulative, 9 and 10. So if I add 2009 and 2010 temporary differences together, and I flip the sign, I get a $2,500 difference. I multiply it by a tax rate of 40% to get, for this year, a year-end <coughs> liability of $1,000, but I have to subtract out the $1,500 in green I already recognized. And so for 2010, when I do cumulative difference and I subtract out the prior year, I end up with a debit a deferred tax asset of $500. So this is linked as a debit, an asset. In the last year, the cumulative of all the years, 9, 10, and 11, is zero because they all net to zero, not surprisingly. I multiply zero by a tax rate to get zero. I have to subtract out the prior year, just like I did before and I end up with a debit of $1,000, a deferred tax asset, which is a debit, and I see the debits equal credits, and I end up with a zero balance in the deferred tax liability. That should make sense because in total, there is no difference in total depreciation. So it would make sense that just for this transaction, just for this tax difference over three years, in total, the deferred tax assets equal the liabilities. They net out, here's the totals. And if, in fact, I linked, I should have linked the summations. There's the blue sum is the credits. Blue sum is the debits. And I end the transaction in zero. Now, the fact is, is that for most companies, you've got, you've got multiple temporary differences all going on at once, so you'll have a deferred tax balance at the end of the year, either asset or liability, because not all of them match up in the same in the same years. You may have one temporary difference that's year on year one and another one that's in year five, etc. That's as far as we'll get on deferred taxes, deferred tax three for individual one on one tutoring online. You can go to the website and also see additional videos, spreadsheets not on the web. Cost Accounting for Dummies I teach in a free online course each week online. It's on Saturdays. And the blog Accounting Accidentally is linked to my web page. There's an automatic feed to the website. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.